Hey everyone, it's William Christopher Ford, once again back in the Kaizen Dojo for this episode of 52 Masters, and in this edition, my good friend, Sensei Robert Temple. Nice to see you, sir. All right. And in the corner, Sensei Chaz. Hi. On the drums. <laughs> that being said. Training. I am 51 years old. I've been a practitioner of Okinawan and Shorin Ryu Karate since I was seven. There were some who would call me a master. I assure you, I am not. I believe that the true expert is someone who still has a student's heart and a beginner's mind. This year, to celebrate turning 52, I'm setting out to learn from 52 other disciplines, each from its own master. Some things I've tried before, others, I'm a first day beginner, like anyone else. 52 weeks, 52 new skills. I'm William Christopher Ford, and this is 52 Masters. So Sensei, thank you so much. <laughs> It's a real honor and pleasure to have you here, and uh, I've been following you for years. We met um, maybe a decade ago over at the uh, Martial Arts History Museum uh, with the uh, Museum Honor Awards for yes. Michael Matsuda, yes. but it is a, a real thrill to have you here in person, and I'm excited about learning from you. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for having <laughs> me, and uh, let's, let's get busy. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. I have uh, uh, Sensei Chaz doing the drums because we do rhythm workout. Okay. And uh, today I want to do with you what I call partnership training. Yes, sir. We'll go through uh, a couple of different things and we'll start working on different ranges, going from long range with the staff to shorter range with the sticks and then uh, close range with the knife. And then we can work some self-defense stuff as well. Okay, sounds great. Okay. Awesome. Here we go. There it is. That's it. Relax your shoulders. That's it. There we go. Good. All right. I'm going to take that back a little bit. There we go. That's it. Now, yeah. There we go. There we go, Chaz. And Chaz is going to take the beat up. And to take this up, we move fast. Same 
line as my D. That way. And we're going to do more of that vertical hand. Mm -hmm. That vertical hand. Relax your shoulder. But what we're going to do is just drop the weight down. Boom. That's what you hit. One. Good. Relax. Pull back. Two. Pull back. Stay more relaxed than that. Sir. Three. Good. Give me that rhythm. Give me that rhythm again. Spot. Because it cuts down the time when you make a motion. Again, we know when we're in front of each other going for it. Again, who's the fastest? But not just who's the fastest, who has a better timing. With the speed. So those two combinations allow us to be more successful. Sir. Here we go. One, two. Hey! Switch me. So when I hit him, he drops. Sir. Relaxation, you got front hand, one, rear hand, and push it out. Leave it out there. There you go. Ah, you were right, you were right. Give me the front hand, the rear hand. Now I've got that pivot going. Now torque back, underbutt. There you go, that's it. One, two, and three, relax. And go. One, and there we go. Good. Do it again. Beautiful. Again. Two more. One more. Beautiful. Relax. Relax. Take the gloves off if you like. Beautiful. I'm going to change and go from there. In fact, you know what? Let me apologize. Gloves back on. Okay. We're going to still do a rhythm drill and a timing drill. But instead of using this pedal, we're going to use our focus mix. So we work power on that one. So now we're just going to go relaxation. Focus drill. It's so challenging. It's, uh, it's great drill. Well, but you do, you're a good martial arts, so you made it work. But the thing is, is that what I love is that it's still, I'm, I'm not getting it right away. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, this is a new, it's kind of new. So, yeah, but, but you got it. <laughs> you know, uh, as you know, all this stuff takes time because you have a different mindset from where your training was before. Sir. And then shifting into someone else's training and timing. My timing is different. Sir. Not my training, just my timing. And then what you did is you worked with that, and then you met me. Now the rhythm, having the drums, having Master Chaz on the drum helps because it, it relaxes you. Yeah, that drum beat brings you to relax because you can, you can change your thought from this or the frustration of not doing it.
to what he's doing, and then in that process, it happens. And why does it happen? Because you line your body up correctly, mm. you, you, have, you follow great directions and instructions, and then eventually it comes. We always say it's 1,000. It's not 100. It's not one. It's 1,000. I repeat this 1,000 times and I may get it. Mm. And then I repeat it another 1,000. <laughs> so now we're just going to go relaxation. I'm over boxing and I'm going to give a jab, relax. You got it. That's it. A right cross. Beautiful. Hook. Boom. And up. There we go. A jab. Cross. Hook. And up. Beautiful. All right, now we're going to work the rhythm into it so you got that, that beat. Changing my thinking, so you stay center on me. Sure. Left, right, boom, good. Left, right, boom, left, right, left, boom, boom. left, right, left. Boom. Now I'm going left, right, left, duck. I'm going for the hit, and I just want you to duck and go, just duck and roll. So I'm going to so left, right, left, duck, duck, good. Now right, left, right, boom, boom, boom. right, left. Just work our bow, staff, whatever you want to call it. And all we're doing is moving together very slowly. Okay? So as I go down, go up. There we go. Good. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's all we're doing. Beautiful. 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 Nice. Good. Nice. So as you can see, with our audience, we're not setting this up just to bang sticks. We're not doing that. We're still working at long range with the damper section because what we're doing is taking it in to where we're fighting. Our left. That's this is where we're going. Come back. Boom. That's what we're trying to get to. Boom, boom. That's what we're getting to. Boom, boom. That's what we're trying to get to. But we're going to use that to work our distance. Sir. Now, I'm going to change up from these. I'm going to get something a little bit safer. <laughs> now, I like these when I work with our young people in our program. I like working with these because you can, <laughs> they can hit and not get hurt. And, and our training part, no one wants to get hurt because the problem in training is once you hurt, you can't train. Right. So, we are doing the pain. So, same thing, just move it. of course with a training tool. Sir, really same thing.
back to that, back to this. Are we working training the night? But what we were really doing is working timing and rhythm with one another, learning to trust one another so that when we get into our sparring scenario, we have enough trust with each other because we didn't bump, didn't bump, to, bump ourselves up with uh, knives or sticks. So now we can move and not be concerned about hurting one another. Sir. So as we move, we move. Still the rhythm is fast. Short distance for me. You. Nice. Nice. Let me see it move. It's beautiful. takes us through all our different drills, work is, work is in, working on distance, focus, time, rhythm, to bring us to a place where we just work as partners. Yes. Partnership training has to do with trust. And we develop trust going through all those different drills. You know, even though we didn't do our self-defense stuff, again, our fighting stuff, and what I enjoyed about what we were doing is that we were using parries. Box. What I don't see a lot, at least in competition, uh, is blocking. <laughs> and that's our foundation. You have to learn the importance of protecting your head. It's nice to hit a guy, but it's better not to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I've been, had the opportunity to move, brother, and you <laughs> allowed me to move. Oh, man. Say, Thank you. That uh, was beautiful. You could have fooled me. You didn't know. <laughs> yes? Nice. Yeah, I was complaining on my on my way here about this joint, that, and this and that, <laughs> and just the dance with the rhythm, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was really uh, awesome. The dance, <laughs> and that's what it was about. Just the dance, and we were able to do that dance. <laughs> so Sensei is going to demonstrate some of the self-defense drills that he does that he has developed through his own training and through his. Um, his take on some of the things that he's learned. So I'm going to be his uh, willing, compliant partner for now. As you can see, his control is excellent. So I have, I have every confidence that uh, I'm going to emerge from this episode <laughs> relatively, again, relatively uninjured. But uh, if you don't see me anymore, you'll know why. Uh, <laughs> so some of the techniques that I do come from uh, the, B, the BKF, or I don't want to say BKF is not a system of style, but from the Kempo that Steve Muhammad has taught, Sir. as well as Bishop Williams. And uh, I take some of those drills. I've also taken some from uh, Chuck Sullivan okay. and that organization. And then we just try to put things together and allow them to flow. And as I put them together, I call it uh, J.C. Shane Temple's Concepts. Mm -hmm. So it's just my interpretation okay. of what my teachers already taught me. Sir. So first one, if you give me a right hand, this is a, just just like a, a uh, actually, uh, you, you know what? Any yeah, right hand uh, as as my instructor said, karate right hand. Okay, karate right hand. Mm -hmm. oh, head or body. Sir. You can do head or body, but you can step with it. Step with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And as you does that, I'm stepping back, step right back, and I'm gonna do go an inward palm check. From there, I'm gonna follow the contour of his arm up to his neck. So I'm gonna do a chop or a slap, and then I'm gonna go from there to a gouge. Drop back down to inverted hammer fist, back up to a heel palm break, a push palm, and a foot scoop. And then I'm going to exit with a middle knuckle punch to the sofa flex. I always like to say speed is less important than accuracy. And one of my teachers is always fun of saying, he says, ask accuracy, speed, and power as one. Mm. And again, what I like about our drill is that you don't always get it right. Mm. That you have the opportunity, you have the, se the sequence, we know how it goes, but then the timing and the rhythm in that can take a moment or two. So if you see that, it was there. <laughs> so as he punches, I step back and I check. A one, top two, gouge. 
hammer, heel palm, push palm, foot, and then an upper punch. And then together, we're gonna let it go. So that's one. We'll go with the left hand on left hook. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do an extended outward block, slide that back down again using the contour of the arm, drop it down to that short rib, vertical punch, heel palm, push palm, scoop again, and then an upward punch again. Swelling hammers, well, not swelling hammers, but one, two, three, four, five, six. So it goes, I do it one more time. So I'm going one, two, three, and punch. One, two, three, four. Hit that shoulder blade, hit the sternum. As I hit the sternum, my desire is for him to move back so I can hit him with this group kick. Now again, he might be too far back for the middle knuckle punch, but if he isn't, I hit him with that middle knuckle. So I'm going to just flow with this one. And that key out because of that expression. <laughs> so what hammer. So that was the second technique. Let's do a grab. As he reaches to grab, I'm going to step back. I'm going to do a double hand grab. I'm going to reach back and parry down. Palm, elbow, push palm. Inverted hammer, palm, grab. Break. Push back and cover out. We call that parting wings. He reaches, back, drop down, nipple up, drop, punch, palm, grab. From that, hammer, spin up, break, palm, and step back. And it goes, easy! Thank you, sir. Thank you. And let's see, last one. Grab from the rear, let's see. If I could do <laughs> twist these wings, he reaches grab. I'm gonna first drop down, hit him in the groin, elbow back, re grab, spin out, break, hit across the stone, pull down, ah, help, elbow push you going, and cover. I am getting excited. <laughs> I like this. So I'm gonna work this one a little slower again. As he grabs me, now again, he got a double grab, he grabbed my shoulder too. Usually we just grab the hand. So now if you don't, grab the shoulder. I'm going to step back in between, hit the groin first. Then I'm going to hit him with that elbow. Re-grab, spin around. Local, break, kick, release. Elbow, knee. And it would flow if I can get it to flow. Okay, so uh, fantastic training. Thank you again, oh, Sensei. More than one. Thank you. <laughs> I really enjoyed it, and it was different because um, we had Sensei Chaz here uh, yeah. doing an awesome job on the drums, yeah. and that added a whole nother dimension it to does. it. You know, it really and I'm does. so glad that you brought him, and he's uh, an accomplished martial artist of himself. So, there he is. Um, you know, from back east and Kyokushin guy, and done a ton of other stuff in Shoran Russo. We, you know, we may have to talk to him uh, at some time in the very near future. Be so but. Cool. Uh, much appreciation to Sensei Chaz. But uh, thank you again for being here. Thanks. And just to give the audience a little bit of background, you know, I've been following Sensei Temple for a long time. You know, um, back in the day in the 80s, he used to compete. And he was, you know, one of the premier fighters at that time. And I got a chance to actually meet him in person. Um, I think it was back in 2012. Um, mm -hmm. We were both being honored at the Museum Honor Awards, yes. um, the award ceremony that Michael Matsuda puts on um, to benefit the Martial Arts History Museum. And I got a chance to actually go up to you and shake your hand and all no. that. And um, we came across each other <laughs> like two yeah. weeks ago at Dragon yeah. Fest. That was cool. And I got a chance to meet your lovely wife and everything. And that's where that's why we're here because I was yeah. like, hey, you know, would you? like to be on 52 <laughs> masters and of course he was kind enough to accept and what a tremendous time we had i mean i had so much fun and learned so much well i'm glad I, again i had a, a wonderful time what, what, i can't say anything more than that it was really cool well we were, were both sweating and breathing hard oh, yes, you sir. know yes it was a good workout it was a good workout <laughs> but fun. you know the, the the drumming also is just it's another dimension it's not only entertaining but it really is a very functional practical training tool that enhances the training it's that the bass when you hear the bass in that drum mm. it and i'm gonna say it, it resonates it, it connects it and it 
pushes you to move. Mm -hmm. It really encourages your body to move. So. Yeah. When did you start incorporating that into your training? Uh, God, years and years ago. Mm. You know, even before I met Master Chaz, uh, because Master Chaz actually is my my drum instructor, mm. um, and because I want to be able to do what he does. But more than that, my father used to drum, and then when I was introduced to Chaz, and he told me what he did. I was like, Yeah, I, I want to do this. And I haven't mastered it yet, but I'm working on it. But years and years ago, we incorporated the music, mm -hmm. and uh, that that bass drum beat just resonates and I said I gotta have that and then to have it live to have Chaz actually playing is a whole another dimension yeah yeah, yeah definitely so. it, it really definitely enhanced the lesson and yeah, it does. I, I it enjoyed does. it very much it actually made it easier for me to get some of the concept that you were trying to teach me you well know? you were moving my friend <laughs> you were truly moving you were moving well well it takes you out of your head a little bit too that's you know? the idea right? yes <laughs> that's the idea I mean because sometimes you're kind of uh, you know and then now I'm just like okay just just listen to the beat and you just know? yeah just flow with it yeah you know and you yeah. did and you did now you um, you grew up in LA um, yes, South Central. And when did you actually, um, I, I believe your first martial art was Shotokan Karate. That was the first thing I studied uh, with this uh, CYO club, a, a free uh, youth program okay. in our neighborhood. Uh, back during that time uh, in South Central, the neighborhood, we used to work, play together. Mm. You know, I learned gymnastics from the older guys and, and then the karate class opened up at the at the youth facility mm. and they went till we all went okay and uh, it was really it was magical mm. and this was good I, I'm telling you how th there is truly a creator and I say that because in that class I and you know I don't even remember my instructors mm. it was about maybe a three month okay class and I know they were brought black belts mm -hmm. um, but in that class after a certain amount of time they asked me, and I used, I say teaching, but of course, when you're white, but you can't teach a thing. But they asked me to show the beginners, mm -hmm. you know, because they didn't have one instructor stopped coming. Okay. And so the one instructor would ask me to share, you know, the basics. Mm -hmm. And from that time on, you know, being able to share the martial arts became, it just became, I don't even want to use the word fun, but I had such a good time with mm -hmm. it. And for me, during that time, I was a very shy kid, okay. you know, and, and I don't mind saying it. I didn't like myself much, mm. you know. Uh, we grew up in that time where uh, uh, if anybody grew up in the in the 70s, you had to have a big fro. <laughs> I didn't have a big fro. Oh, you didn't have the fro? I didn't have a big fro until <laughs> high school. I had something. <laughs> but I didn't really particularly care who I was. Mm. And karate changed that for me. Mm. It dramatically changed that. It gave me um, a place where I could go and work with others and others work with me and it really encouraged me and allowed me to feel better about who I was. Mm. Now you yeah. were, uh, like many of us, influenced by Bruce Lee. Oh, yes, sir. Kato. Yes. The Green yes, Hornet. Yes, yes. And Batman. Ah, and, you know, okay. And was that? <laughs> I, don't, I don't like to admit that, but yeah, Batman well, was my favorite now, I'm character. A, I'm a Batman fan myself, yeah. but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. Okay. But I... Um, saw this episode of Batman with, you know, um, Adam West and Burt Ward and oh. Bruce Lee and the Green, you know, Kato yeah. and the Green Hornet yeah. were guest stars on that. Yeah. And Robin and Kato were fighting. Fighting, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> they had to kind of make Robin look good, good yeah. and, you know, and yeah. we're all going, yeah. you know who's uh -huh. going to win this fight, Exactly. Man. It's exactly. like, come on, man. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no competition, no match. No I mean, match. you know, and, and nothing against, you know, Burt Ward, but right. um, you could clearly see Bruce Lee's Superior technique, you know. Well, you could say, this is like this is a trained dude. You can clearly see that, you know, just the way he moved and it was so sharp. I mean, even back then. So um, that was one of my uh, my first experiences with martial arts mm -hmm. before I even did martial arts, you know. Okay. And okay. you know, of course, uh, the show Kung Fu was a big influence on okay. me as well. But um, you know, I hear you, and then you got a chance to actually experience it. And from an early age, you yes. kind of knew that teaching was something that. You know, it, it excited it you. It excited yeah? me to, to be able to share. And uh, um, again, you know, if we go back to, to films, I don't know if you remember Five Finger Death. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, our family, uh, my aunt, 
kind of used to take us as well as my twos, and he used to take us to the movies. Mm. You know, I had uh, a cousin and my brother, and they would pack us, you know, all the kids in the station wagon, mm. and we would go to the drive-in. Yeah, yeah. And we would look at Five Fingers of Death, mm -hmm. you know, and all those karate movies, yeah, yeah. you know, that came out. And those things, I don't know about my, my brother and my cousin, uh, but myself, man, it really excited me. It just yeah. and I wanted to do that. I wanted to do what they were doing. When his hand, his hand lit up and you heard oh, the theme from Ironside, uh, <laughs> you know. But then when Bruce Lee came out, mm -hmm. that you go light years beyond what we were looking at. The yeah. Five Fingers of Death in the Chinese movies. Yeah, his stuff was realistic. Or you could probably take it from uh, not probably in the Green Hornet, but in, in some of his other movies. Sure, you can take it from the movie and practice and make some of that stuff work. Yeah, absolutely, you know, especially absolutely. in *The Dragon*. You go, wow. You know, so he was phenomenal. Yeah. I remember seeing some of the stuff that he did, and I was like, yo, that was a good technique. You know, and I would actually go back into yeah. the dojo and try to like work yeah. it on pads or yeah. something like that. You know, yeah. so yeah, definitely influenced me, and in, in not just an entertainment way, but right. you know, a lot of the stuff was was functional. You know, and yes, you could, you could take it. There were a lot of lessons. You know, and that 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 was the difference of what I think he did versus some of the other movies mm -hmm. that we've seen. Yeah, you know, but they were all exciting, and they were all. Uh, like I said, it take you from where you were at, like I said, a shy kid in, in South Central to, you know, wherever else I wanted to go with this martial arts. Mm -hmm. And martial arts actually did do that for me. Mm -hmm. It took me from those four square blocks of where we lived. It took me uh, around, and, and I, I would like to say around the world. I haven't been all the way around yet, yeah. but it took me in some places where I didn't think I would be able to go, but the martial arts mm -hmm. and the martial arts community allowed me to do those types of things. How did you transition from uh, Shotokan to the Kempo-based styles that you studied and now practice and teach? Well, the transition wasn't easy uh, in the beginning. Um, I was 13 and my mom had, uh, let, let me give you this quick one. Um, I took the Shotokan and I was living with one parent and then we, then we moved to a different part of town with my mom and uh, I took what I learned, and I actually was sharing with the neighborhood kids. Oh. We actually, I actually had a class, okay. you know, in the complex that we lived in. And then one day I was watching TV, and I seen uh, Steve Saunders, who is now Steve Muhammad. Mm -hmm. He was on a show called I Am Somebody. Mm. Uh, but I never seen a person, uh, a, a person that looked like me, mm. you know. Uh, and he was moving so sharp. Mm -hmm. But what happened, we used to play football um, down, uh, down the way, and we played it on what we call this island. It, it's like in between the, one side of the street and the other, cars are going yeah, this yeah. way, cars are going that way. Yeah, yeah. We played football on that. Mm -hmm. But right across the street where we played, there was a school called Sheenway, mm -hmm. School and Culture Center. And for my 13th birthday, my mother asked me what I wanted. And I told you, I'd seen Steve Muhammad. I want to take karate lessons. Mm. So she signed up at Shingway and then found out that that was one of Mr. Muhammad's or Sanders, one of his uh, internship schools. Wow. You know, so the transition of, uh, of from Shotokan to Kempo was difficult because I was used to straighter moves mm -hmm. and, str and strength. And the Kempo flowed a little bit yeah. more so. Yeah in its beginning stages, and uh, mm -hmm. when, when, um, Shotokan in its beginning stages. Remember, I was just a beginner, yeah, yeah. so I wasn't a great representative for Shotokan at the time. Mm. But later I found out that as the levels of training go on, regardless of what system of style you're in, you can flow. Mm. You know, so even Shotokan flows depending on the person who's performing it. I agree. There's a lot of hidden circles even with, oh my gosh. with what they call yeah. the linear arts, right? Yes. But yes. if yes. your yes. wrist rotates, that's a circle. You yes, know? it is. And you know, yeah. uh, there's a lot of hidden, you know, sometimes the, the real gold, as you know, is in between point A and point B. Do you know what I mean? So now, as you said that, I used to look at Kimbo Steel Dust as Kimbo was, we, we used to classify a system as hard or soft. Mm -hmm. That's how they used to classify mm -hmm. system. Either you were doing a hard system, Shotokan, Shonru, or Okinawan, or, Ch Kung, uh, or Chinese style Kung Fu, mm -hmm. you know, any of those types of things. I always think the Kempo was that line in, in the middle. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were hard and soft. Yeah. But later I learned most, most students who continue their studies with our switch system, that's what we get to. Interesting. We get both the hard and the soft, that blend of both, mm -hmm. because you understand at a certain amount of time that it's, it's it's about movement. Yeah. You know? And going deeper into your art, sometimes you 
discover, you know, and, and sometimes I've gone outside my art mm -hmm. to only discover that, wow, that was kind of what, it was kind of here all the time. Yeah, you know? absolutely. But I needed to go outside the art in order to see that frame of reference so that I could recognize it within my own art. But it's yes. like, oh, there's yeah. a lot of throws in Shorty yes. no Karate, yes. you know? Like yes. the, the pivots and things like that in our kata are like, right. oh, that's a throw, you know? And so, you, you know, know, I've there had people go. point it out to me. It's like, didn't you know that was a throw? And I'm like, no. And they show it to me. I'm like, how did I not see that? You know, yeah. so. Uh, wasn't there to see at the time. <laughs> right. I wasn't ready for it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But then when you were, there it was. I know that, you know, you got a chance to train with um, Master Chuck Sullivan. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Derek Goodrich. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, you met with uh, CJ Steve Muhammad and yes. um, Master Donnie Williams. So yes. can you tell me how... Real briefly, how you, the, what's what's the timeline on that, and how did you um, eventually get to? Uh, and and I love I love you asked the timeline because it's like crazy. How could yeah. I mean I did quite a bit in the amount of time that there was, and I I look back now and I'm amazed. How did I do all that? Mm. And, and the only way I can come up, the answer I can give is that I really believed in what we were doing. So mm. I gave it I gave it my all. I did it. I lived it. I drank it. I ate it, mm. I slept it. Yeah, mm. it was martial arts all in all because it was just that uh, overwhelming mm. for me. I mean, it, it really took me to a different place. Um, but I started off at Shinwe. The Black Karate Federation at that time was uh, had a group of men, um, and I can name it was uh, Steve Saunders, uh, Danny, well, Steve Sa Jerry Smith, uh, Ron Chappelle, Cliff Stewart, and then uh, Steve Saunders. Uh, and then through Saunders, it was Donnie Williams, mm -hmm. uh, and I think Curtis Pulliam, and one other person, I can't remember her name, but we would go to each other's school. you know. So my desire at that time, I had a desire to study with each one of the founding, uh, co-founders. That was my desire. Mm -hmm. you know. It, I mean, we call ourselves this, and these guys were phenomenal, and they were still there. Mm -hmm. So I made it a point for me personally to put time in which each and every instructor that I could that allowed me to. And some did and some did not. Amazing. You know, and uh, the, I found out within the BKF, like any other place, it's about relationship. Mr. Muhammad had a good relationship, or Mr. Saunders had a good relationship with Donnie, so they were partners. Mm -hmm. um, Ron Chappelle, Cliff Stewart, they were partners, mm -hmm. and Jerry Smith. And then the idea of once I went from school to school, you know, you meet the students and then you start uh, get, forming that brotherhood within students, sure. you know, classmates. And then, you know, had the opportunity to study with, uh, I studied with Cliff Stewart for a bit. I studied with Jerry Smith for a bit, yeah. uh, Donnie Williams, as well as Steve Muhammad. Mm. The Muhammad heads are Steve Saunders, uh, who's now Steve Muhammad, after yeah. you've seen it that way. Sure. But sure. Uh, I, I look at uh, him as my spiritual father, as I do with. Bishop Williams, mm. uh, they allowed me to um, uh, to become a part of their extended family. Mm. You know, I mean, really, they gave me a lot of time. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know, it it was um, it, it it was time consuming. You know, but I truly believed in the martial arts. You know, I often say, and and some may uh, some may not agree. I believe martial arts is a faith belief. Mm -hmm. It's it's not the faith that I practice. I am, and if you don't mind me saying, I'm a Christian mm -hmm. uh, uh, through uh, through Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe martial arts is a faith belief. It's a belief, and at that time, it was my faith belief. I trained every opportunity I had. Mm -hmm. Anything that came up to do with training, I was there. Mm -hmm. But and the schools were open. We were open pretty much seven days a week. Mm -hmm. You know, at one of the schools. And I think we were working on uh, today um, training, uh, partnership training. And I can tell you, it was uh, my training partners that helped me to be, um, if I was successful at all in, in martial arts, it was because of my training partners as well. Mm. You know, each and every person that I had the opportunity to work with, whether it was a guy who uh, used me for a training dummy <laughs> or, you know, the, the person who uh, kept me encouraged and kept me coming. At one point in time, you know, if you got a call from your instructor and he said, you know, we're going to do a demonstration, you know, you knew that that meant you were going to be the dude that took the hits. Yeah, but, you take the hits. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, 
you it, if you survived that, which you usually did, you know, you uh, you learned a lot. That was an honor. You it was know, an honor. Yeah. You know, where else you're, can you go okay, and, you know? and, and get beat up and still want to come back the next day and hold it and pay the guy? Yeah. You know, you know, for those who did pay, a lot of the time, I instructors honestly, we needed, we couldn't afford to pay, and they allowed us to come anyway. Wow, well, that's uh, that's. I, I respect that. And, and, oh, and, and gosh, I'm thankful I've, for it. And I've done that myself, you know, yeah. where, you know, yes, it's sir. like, well, okay, you know, can how are you with the broom? Can you can you sweep? Can you take out the trash? Yeah. You know? And, yeah. And it's like, yeah. What a lesson. You know, we'll we'll figure it out later yeah. on, you know. And, what you know, a true lesson. My own instructor, you know, I, I came up under um, Sensei Richard Rubago, whose instructor was Master Tadashi Amashita. Mm. Sensei Rubago has passed, but, you know, Sensei Amashita is uh, still... Um, teaching and still yes. amazing. I, yes. you know, I, have, I don't train with him anymore. I haven't seen him in 10 years. You know, we, we tend to sometimes go separate ways. True, sure, you grow. But nothing but, you, you know, respect for him as a martial artist. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, um, since the Robago, I know um, coming up in his dojo, there were times when he was paying the rent out of his own pocket. You know, he worked at TRW for, yes. and yeah. you know, sometimes it was just like, yeah, I think Sensei's uh, footing the bill for a lot of these students, oh, yeah. you know, and that's just the way he was, you know, mm -hmm. it was like, look, you want to train, come train, yes. you know, and yeah. we'll figure it out later on. Yeah. You know, that, that yeah. was all of my, all of my teachers. Yeah. They did that. And again, they had to have other jobs in order to, to pay for this place that we called our dojo, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I mean, what a sacrifice. For sure. You know, um, I am familiar with some names that I, um, one is uh, Master Cole Pepper, who mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. who's always been cool to me. I, I, I haven't seen him in a long time, but I, I, I'd like to catch up with him. But um, I have his number if you don't. Okay, okay. Just yeah. seen him last week. Well, as I say, I never call anybody after four in the morning because ah. that's what time I go to bed. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so no worries there. But um, there's a gentleman named Carl Scott ah. who I used to watch in Kung Fu movies also. Yes. You know, he, used to, he, yeah. he did uh, some movies with a gentleman named Billy Chong. You know, yeah. I think it was about yeah. the Crystal Fist or something yes. like that. Yeah. And I've had the honor of speaking with him on the phone and I haven't met him in real life. So I'm hoping that you can connect me with him at some point in time because he's uh he's just somebody I did, I've admired and I'd I'd like to meet it. I would like time. to I call him brother. Okay. I mean we have grown uh, uh very close over the years. Mm. Uh Carl was um and I'm in my age group as we were training, mm. he was the guy to beat. Mm. That you couldn't beat. Mm -hmm. He was just that good. He was so good that uh, uh, his last name is Scott, but they would call him Carl Sanders after Steve Sanders. Really? Yeah, because he was just that good. Wow. Yeah, I remember watching people bet. I mean, people betting on this guy, you know, in a mm -hmm. tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he was just that good and, and that exciting. And uh, uh, again, I call him my brother. Mm -hmm. You know, so hopefully we can. Uh, uh, we can make some connection at some I, point. I, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, it's all about, you know, community and relationship and everything yes. like that, you know, yes. and, uh, you know, of course I'm, I'm a fan, but, mm. you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, how can I be of service and, you know, what can I do for, for the community? So, um, yes, I'm yes, hoping sir. that I can be of service in that way, you know. Let I me, think you are. Uh, I, I mean, I don't think I know you are. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, we, we talked earlier, I mean, this, these past two years, as everybody uh, remembers it was real, real challenging time. Yes, sir. And yet you still, you stood the test of time. You kept teaching. Well, you know, and you still have a dojo. Amazing. I said that to you early. Amazing. You know. You know, I, um, uh, you know, I'm committed. Uh, you know, it's, it's sometimes, you know, you have to have a must, not a should. You know, and okay. it's like, well, you know, it's not I should teach. It's like, well, I must teach. I, 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 <laughs> yes, I, I'm in. You know? Yes, sir. Yes, but. Really you know, in, yeah. You know, all, all love and respect to my dojo families and the yeah. students. They stuck with me through that time. And it was Zoom. And, you know, at that time I was learning how to use the technology through the kids who were showing up. You oh, know? You, you too? I'd, yeah. I'd be like, uh, Max, uh, yeah. what button do I push now? Yeah. And he's like, well, Sensei, you got to push this and this. Yeah. Is so yeah. I you know, had to get up the learning curve. And fortunately, you know, I come from an entertainment background too. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I'm able to kind of turn it into a show where it's a little <laughs> bit more entertaining. Right. You know, some of my peers and colleagues had a hard time because, you know, there's this, 
you know, there's a little bit of a lag between, was, you know, yeah. and you see the dog coming across the screen yep. and, yeah. you know, it yeah. was, it's challenging yeah. for people because it's a different medium and you're just yeah. going, you know, and you just kind of have to learn to go with the flow. But, you know, I'm very grateful. Well, I had a great help doing that same period on the Zoom with, with my wife. I mean, she would have her set up everything and, you know, then it, again, like I said, it really, it, it took some time to figure it out. Yeah. You know, as you said, you just can't have people on the screen. You have to make sure that they feel comfortable by being on. Yeah. And then you have to allow the dog to run across <laughs> yeah, or, or the brother or the sister. It's to, like they're in yeah. their house, you know, like yeah. you got to just let some things go and yeah. just kind of, you know, it's, it's just, yeah. it's, it's part of it. And now, you know, and now what once was a luxury becomes a necessity because yes. now you can easily say, you know what, let's do private from my living room, no. yeah. you know, and, and it's great, you know, and you can yeah, make yeah. it work. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's like, you know, it saves people from having to, while there's nothing like in-person training. Oh, gosh, I love that the best. Sometimes really you can get a lot out of just, you know, yeah. out of a Zoom session, you know. So it's 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 here to stay. And, and you know, at, at the end of the day, it's still a, a, a really great thing. Well, you know? I tell you, it's interesting that we've been talking about this because uh, Mr. Vicar Luke LaRue, as well as Chuck Sullivan, had a teaching program on a video teaching program mm. way back. Oh, okay. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, going, how, but, you know, that, that'll never work. Mm. You know, and here we are today, you know, we're doing things on Zoom. They were way ahead of the curve. Yeah. Just, just like, um, yeah. you know, uh, Hiron and Henner Gracie, I started Gracie University online, you know, mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. years before the curve. And, you right. know, it, it was like, pfft. You can't learn from a video. Right. And it's like, well, you know what? They were right. You yeah, know? they so were right. Again, you they know, right. they're not saying, you know, don't train in person. But right. if you can't, you know, even if you go to class and you have a video to supplement that afterwards, mm -hmm. it can be tremendously helpful. Well, it has been. And I'm thankful mm -hmm. for, again, the technology. For sure. Yeah. Let for me ask so. you a question. Sure. Um, what, what do you think is the, the thing that you've learned uh, of, of most value from... Um, CGO Mohammed, Steve Mohammed, and Master Williams. Um, you know, both of them are kind of your spiritual fathers in a yeah, sense. Yeah, they are. You know? They are. So if you had they to say, are. okay, this is one of the most important things I've learned from each of these individuals, what would you say that was? I can say that's a, a tough question because then I have to think about that and <laughs> see if, if I can come up with at least a portion of it. Well, what is it about each of them, uh, like a quality that they have that you admire? Oh, gosh. Uh, both is that they love their faith. Mm. Uh, two different faiths. Yes. Uh, Steve uh, Muhammad is, is Muslim. Mm -hmm. Donnie Williams is Christian. Mm -hmm. And uh, I watch these men grow in their faith. Mm. And in their faith as they grew, I seen the growth of love for their families, mm -hmm. and then for us, the extended family. Mm. Um, if I learned anything, hmm, man, that, that, that really is a tough question because I learned so many different things from these guys. You know, I said the love of family, love of family, the love of, family, the mm -hmm. love of community, love of extended mm -hmm. family. You know, that's that's why I do what I do, is because they've done it for me first. You know, so them giving. Uh, as, as we talked about it earlier, you know, having to have a job and, and paying to open up a studio for people to come in and train. Yeah. You know, the love that they have for community, the love that they have for family. Mm. Um, they've showed me that not just, they didn't just talk about it. They're doing it and presently mm. doing it, you know, family. Well, with only meeting each of these individuals once, you know, yeah. I had the pleasure of meeting both of them and they were both kind enough to you know take a selfie with me. So, mm -hmm. um, but what struck me about both of these individuals um, was that uh, they seemed, uh, you know, their their commitment and their passion is unquestionable. Yes. You know, I mean, yeah. over the decades, you know, yes. their compassion, their love for the community. I'm, st I'm still there. You know, you know, I still <laughs> call them up. Yeah, you know, I'm way in my. My older age now, <laughs> you know, they knew me when I was 12 and 13, Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and now I still call them up mm. and they still answer the phone. You know, yes. I know when people love me because mm. they answer the phone. Yeah. You know, everybody's lives are busy, sure. but they pick up the mm. phone, you know, and, and, and commune with me mm. as well as my family, mm. you know. 
Yeah. So that is that is something. That's something that I want to keep doing for those in which I serve. You know, pick up the phone when they call. I had a mm -hmm. parent. Uh, I seen a parent uh, back at one of our back to school events in Santa Monica, and a parent uh, shared with me some things that are going on with her son, who uh, who I taught. He's in his twenties now, about could be you know, middle twenties or early thirties, and uh, she shared with me some some tough things that are going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, all I can do is give him my number, mm. have him call me. Mm. You know, I may not have the answers, but I'm going to give him some time. You know, and if we can, if I can help him find the answers to help him get through, you know, as you said, committed. My teachers have been committed to me and has taught me to be committed. Sometimes that's all it takes is for someone to know that you're there, you know. This is not a hobby. It's mm -hmm. not a hobby for you. It's not a hobby for me. This is what I do. Yes, sir. You know, I yeah. mean, and I enjoy what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a saying once that sometimes I fall in love with martial arts or fall out of love with martial arts. But I always fall back in love with it. <laughs> I always fall. This, uh, you allowing me to participate in um, your show and the work that you're doing makes me love martial arts even more. Mm -hmm. Not because you gave me an opportunity to, to, to move and show, but meeting you, honestly, meeting you, you know, and listening to your commitment to what we do you know it, it, it's very very encouraging you know because we all know it's it's not a lot of money you know not a lot of money you know not very many people been able to do what i would say a chuck norris has done sure you know or, or even a billy blinks you know where you start a system and then and, 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 and you know people take it and you know type yeah. over forever yeah you know i mean not even all of us can do that Mm -hmm. You know, not because it wasn't just about skill. There was so much more. Yes, sir. You know, and what people might not know, and maybe they do know about you, but you're an actor, you're an entertainer, you know, but you're one who gives back to the community, you know, the community that, that we love, which is the martial arts community. Well, thank you. It means a lot, uh, especially coming from you. Ah, you know, it, but, it's uh, the truth. Appreciate that. I wanted to ask you another question regarding your POW program, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. that's a community base you do in Santa Monica. Yes, Santa Monica. I've been there about the 30 something years. And what does POW stand for? Police Activities League. Okay. Um, even though I'm not a police officer, uh, I am a, um, a, a city employee. Okay. And uh, with that, uh, the POW police, they, are, they always have a police involved with us. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity for the community to have an, a positive interaction with the police department. And I was actually recruited in by a police officer. I had a studio. I was teaching at a studio, Santa Monica's Karate and Fitness. Uh, a studio, actually, a friend of mine uh, uh, brought me in, uh, and we became partners. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we did is uh, we, uh, I won't say donated, we offered our class free to PAL. Mm -hmm. And in that, I had one of the officers who would bring the kids down, and then he would participate in the class. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was like, wow, this guy's not just talking he's not just dropping them off he jumped in the class mm -hmm. and i was sold and then the opportunity came up for me to uh, become a city employee mm -hmm. to teach at their gym they had a boxing gym at the time mm -hmm. and when they brought me in uh i did the boxing and i brought the martial arts in nice you know and the program we had such a good time mm -hmm. and in the beginning we had the old rickety gym that nobody cared about cared about and uh uh, through the years, they eventually tore the gym down and built a whole new facility. Mm. Uh, but the PAL program gave me an opportunity to share what we do with, I would say, literally hundreds and hundreds of kids. Mm. You know, um, again, PAL didn't, PAL wasn't teaching karate, but they had a karate program mm. that they allowed me to teach and bring in other instructors. I mean, I would bring, like you, I'm bringing all my instructors and, and friends in to share time mm. with, with seminars and showcases and the workshops and whatever we could do to help the community. And we had such a good time in it, you know. Since COVID, things have changed a bit, you know, and the program is not the way it was. At one time, I had the opportunity. I had a full fitness gym, boxing and karate, mm. you know, and all the other things. Uh, and since COVID, things have changed a bit. Okay. So we're in the process of transitioning back to opening up some of the programs that we had to close off during the COVID. Okay. 
Well, that's good to hear that it's um, it's going to rise again. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah. How could it not? It was pretty successful, and it was because the people cared about, you know, yeah. what, what we were doing, you know, yeah. and we cared about them, so. Nice. I wanted to circle back to um, some of your earlier days. Yes. Um, specifically, um, Grandmaster Ed Parker, mm -hmm. and you mentioned that you did you didn't necessarily train with him, but you had a few encounters with him. I mean, you know, that because of the people that you trained with, you yes. were, you know, he was like the yeah. teacher of your teachers. He was the teacher right? of my teachers, absolutely. And certainly one of the great legends in the martial oh, yes, arts, sir. you know, yes, sir. history. But you, uh, I wanted you to share a little bit with our audience about the, uh, the you know, him coming up to you and, you know, you, 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 know, I, you were telling me this story and it, it made me smile uh, about you had some interaction with, with, with GM Parker. Yes, well, it, it, it started off for me personally, um, studying with one of his students' students, uh, with Steve Saunders. And my desire, whenever we would go to the tournament, which was called the Internationals at that time, yeah. was one of the biggest tournaments ever. And my desire any time I competed was to show Mr. Parker what a great teacher my teacher was. Mm you know, yeah. and how much he cared about the art in which my teacher shared that Mr. Parker, through his teaching, shared with, with mm. Steve Saunders, Steve mm. Muhammad. Uh, that was my desire. Mm -hmm. So many times I competed at that in particular tournament, I was hoping to catch his eye, you know, just so I can say, see how well your, te your, your teaching is, you know, just to compliment him yeah. on how well Kimpo is mm -hmm. um, through, uh, through his students. Mm. And um, I didn't know if I, I did that or not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I fought for many years and, and did pretty well at, mo at most times. Uh, again, I can't say I won all the time because I did not, of course. you know, but I had a, I had a great time, mm -hmm. you know. But one, uh, um, one day I had an opportunity to have an encounter with Mr. Parker. And here's, here's the thing is that he was always there and around and available. But because I was so involved in what I was doing in my community, I didn't take the opportunities that were given to me to interact with him personally. Mm -hmm. I did have the opportunity to study with some of his students, yeah. uh, some of his top students, Mr. Sullivan, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Uh, Albert Canejo. Mm -hmm. uh, these gentlemen really loved on me. One gentleman named Bernie, I forget Bernie's last name. Uh, I went to uh, Mr. S Mr. S uh, Muhammad, Mr. Sanders, took me to a, a, a black belt workout at their Santa Monica school. I mm. thought he might be there. Mm. He wasn't there though. Mm. But that was the day I was 16 years old. And I mm. just got my black belt just a few months earlier. Mm. And I had a chance to work out with these senior black belts. Mm. And they all welcomed me in, mm. you know? And that was wonderful. To this day, I still spend time with Mr. Sullivan, still with Mr. Um, 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 Albert Canejo mm. because they accepted me, mm. you know? Um, but then at one in particular event that we talked about, uh, it was a kickboxing match, and it was at the uh, back when they had the Hollywood Palladium. Okay. And I walked in, and I seen that this big guy, Mr. Ed Parker. Mm. And I didn't know Mr. Parker all the years I competed. I didn't know that he knew who I was. Mm. I really didn't. You know, I mean, come on, this is my teacher's teacher, the teacher of all my teachers. You know, and he was Ed Parker, mm. you know, somebody, you don't, for me, you don't just walk up and say, hey, hey, Mr. Parker, you know, <laughs> no way. But he came and greeted me. Oh, he wow. gave me the biggest hug, wrapped his hands around me, swallowed mm. me. Big Hawaiian his, hug. Oh, yes, he did. Okay. And he gave me so much love. And at that point, I knew he knew mm. my teacher, mm. you know. It's amazing. And, uh, oh, God, he was amazing. Mm. You know, now here's the amazing part about it, and I, I, and I need to share this with you. Okay. As now I have every day of my, my married life, I have the opportunity to study Ed Parker's Kempo because my wife is a six degree black belt under, under one of Mr. Parker's senior students, uh, Mr. Brian Hawkins. Ah. And now I have a library of mm. Ed Parker in my house, mm. a living library. That's amazing. Oh my God, I'm, I'm desiring to be one of her black belts. Well, I think your wife probably is, can handle herself even without the Kempo, because yeah. I've heard she's got a mean backhand. Oh, you know? yes she does, but she's, she's a devil. That is uh, amazing to know. Yeah. 
And on that subject, I, you know, I have a good, very good relationship with Ed Parker's son, Ed Parker Jr. A lot of, oh, okay. a lot of the art that you see, he created for me. Oh, really? The kids. There's a picture of he's my very, two of my heroes good. over there. Is the uh, picture of Bruce Lee and Muhammad Ali, and okay. so he custom made that for me. Is like you know both of them oh, facing each yeah, other. Yeah, You know, um, a lot of the art here was created by him. Um, okay, I, I commissioned him to do it. Um, wow. And so sometimes he sends me things. Just you know, he goes, "Hey, brother, here I just wanted to give you this right. this extra thing," mm -hmm. and he sent me this painting he had done of his dad. Oh wow! Uh, this that is, is beautiful. This is um. Ed Parker in his prime, yeah. you know, when he was yeah. a young man, yeah. and I am going to gift this to you and your wife. This oh, is no. this is what I would like to give to oh, you guys. Oh my goodness! And you can put it in your house. Oh my gosh! And uh, that's my gift to you. Oh, um, thank you. Because I think thank that you, thank you, thank it's, you. It's, it's better. It's I think it's a better home wow. in your home. You know. Wow. And so uh, I think uh, I I was I've been waiting for the perfect people to give that to. Oh. And uh, wow, this and, is and, and they found it. So, well, thank, this is truly an honor. <laughs> and again, I, I'm on camera, but and then uh, let me not shed a tear. But my God, don't laugh at me, Jazzy. <laughs> but this is truly, truly an honor. No, it's my pleasure. It's oh, my pleasure. Gosh. <laughs> uh, and so, holy, the honor because you also shared, I can share this with my wife. So, this oh, is a, that's a know, big deal. So that's I, a big I, deal. I'm so thank glad you. that you were able to share that. Um, you know, on camera with our audience, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and you know, I think that that's going to, you know, that, that it, it just, you know, amazes the timing is perfect, yes. you know. Yes, yes, yes. And, yes, you know, yes, I, yes. I did this not know that your wife actually was a high ranking Kempel practitioner she in that system. Is. So it's just she sort of is. like, you know, I, I, I thought, well, this would be nice. I want to do something nice you for know, you. you and I, really I, just, nice. I just realized it's like, wow, this was something really significant. Nope. And, it, uh, it is. Yeah. It is. So, um, but it's, it's my pleasure. It really thank is. you. Well, thank you. We are very honored. Uh, yes, that is touching. I'm, I'm looking at my wife for the audience. I'm looking this way because my wife is an audience. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm looking and going, yeah. All right. Well, you that guys, means, hey, you know what? I got you gave me some winning points with my wife. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm serious. Well, thank you're, you. you're spending your Sunday with me. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, we thank you for uh, allowing guys. your husband this to do wonderful. that. Thank you. I wanted to wrap up everything with uh, a question that I ask all my guests yes. and basically it's a sort of a 52 master standard okay. but let's pretend today was the last day you get to teach mm. and you're with your students oh man and don't you, say that you get to impart one thing and it's basically like okay guys this is what I want you to remember for the rest of your lives for the rest of your training remember this what do you think that would be well, we've talked about it uh, throughout our conversation today as well as in our practice, is that there's something greater than we are as individuals. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to realize that and believe that each and every one of us have something to offer the other person. Mm -hmm. And that we need to stay connected with one another. We need to, I don't want to just say love, but we need to share and give and receive uh, with with one another, and that um, that is that is something to be, ah man. There is something greater than us, and we need to just believe that and, and, and touch bases with one another and connect and love and pray and work and and. Uh, I would tell my students, let's keep living, let's keep working, let's keep loving. Mm. I mean, mm. beautiful. I have a faith belief, and I pray that they find their faith belief. It's important, and the martial arts will help them to do that. So keep doing what we've been doing, loving on one another. I want to thank you so much for being ah. here, sir. Uh, what a pleasure thank and honor. You. Thank uh, you, thank you. So much fun and just so much, uh, I think, deep, deep knowledge mm. that was uh, dropped. I'm not saying necessarily in a physical way, but just, you know, you being able to share your experience with everybody else, everybody benefits from it, you know, and this is a legacy, you know. Yeah. So, thank, thank you. you. No, thank you. I've enjoyed uh, this time with you, but I've also enjoyed watching your work and, and learning about some of the instructors. 
and, and I've said this to you earlier, that uh, we're not all that different. No, we're you not. Know, systems, styles, cultures, we're not all that different. Yes, sir. You know? And uh, mm -hmm. I'm happy to have met you again and to really <laughs> have met you now. I know where you live, so well, I'll come visit sometime. It's always nice to finally, like, <laughs> connect and not yeah. just know you know who somebody is but yeah. actually it's like you know what that's my friend yeah. you know and somebody yeah. who i who i can connect with yeah. on a very deep level and trust and love so uh, once again my brother thank oh, you so much thank you <laughs> thank you for the term brother I'm, I'm i'm gonna uh i'm gonna call you up on that that means when i come to to visit uh, you're welcome in well i think we're going to be seeing a lot more of each other in the very near future uh so i think you're stuck with me and, all right uh, and you're with me and uh, you guys are too <laughs> yeah. thank you so once again this is william christopher ford with the great robert temple this is 52 masters and we'll see you next time